Hi, this is Tamara from ooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the assembly for Fortune's Hat, which is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. You can find a link to this free pattern in the description, uh, as well as a link to the Lion Brand Superwash Merino I used to make it, and the furls hooks shown here. Now, I've already done two videos demonstrating how to make the main stitch pattern used for the fabric of this hat. So those are linked in the description as well. Rather than replicate those videos, I'm going to just show how to assemble and finish the hat. So let's get started. Okay, what you see in front of you is the fabric for the hat itself. This takes you through uh, row 39. I've made, it's in a corner to corner pattern. You can kind of see the rows going back and forth there and it just makes a rectangle like this. After you've made the rectangle, don't cut the yarn. You can see it's still attached here. I used a stitch marker to keep my loop active, uh, but I did go ahead and just lightly block this with some water and let it dry overnight before I'm gonna finish the hat. Simply because this fabric looks better when it's been blocked and opened, and it's really hard to block it once it's already made into a hat. So once you've got this rectangle made, then it's time to assemble it. What we're going to do is slip stitch right up here to create a seam to create a tube. Then we'll gather around the top and add a brim. So let's do that. First thing I'm going to do is take out this stitch marker holding my loop open. I'm gonna turn it around. It doesn't really have a right side or a wrong side at this point, so it's just however is comfortable for you to pick it up. At this point, I'm using the L hook. In this case, it's a yellow one. And because of the way the corner to corner stitch works, here we are, I actually ended up one block in from the edge. This is the edge right here, the short edge that I wanna to join to the other short edge to create my tube. So I'm just going to slip stitch over to this corner right here. Let me get my hook back in here. And then I'm just going to slip stitch, just as I did when I was making the main stitch pattern. I'm going to slip stitch right across to the corner. Whoops. There we go. And one more in that stitch there. And then finally, I'm going to end with a slip stitch here in that corner, that chain three space. Whoops, let me try that one more time. Didn't wanna go through. There we go. Okay, so now I'm ready to make that seam. To make it, I'm just going to use slip stitch seaming. So let me move my fabric around here, getting a little tangled. There we go. Till I've got my two short ends together, like so. Okay. So all I'm going to do is work a slip stitch seam, which is just slip st stitching through both layers all the way up to the other end. So let's do a few of those together here. I'm going to go back into this chain three space, and you can do this however you like. Work into the parts of the hat that are easiest for you. On the other side, it's a different part of the corner to corner stitch that I'm addressing here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go right into, let's say right here, where this chain space is right here, the end of that chain three block. At this point, it doesn't really matter exactly where you're working into each square. You just wanna keep your stitches even as you work up the seam. So here, it looks like it would be a good place to actually go into a stitch. This one looks pretty good too. Let's go into the stitch right here. And pull that right back down to the middle. Sorry about that. There we go. So basically, this one is a little bit um, I don't want to say make it up as you go, but find the places that you think need a stitch and just seam it right on up. There's not really a specific place in here where you need to work. As long as you're working with the same color yarn, the seam itself should pretty well disappear. Just try and keep your stitches about evenly spaced. You don't want them to be too few because then your fabric will pull together. You don't want them to be too many because then you'll end up with a ruffle on this seam. Just keep working along this edge and you can check it every so often and make sure it's not pulling or ruffling and continue all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this seam. Okay, so I have finished seaming up the short ends of my tube together. You can see that's what it looks on like on both sides. It's not particularly distinctive and that's one of the great things about this seam. If you need more information on slip stitch seaming, I do have a separate tutorial for that on the Moogly Blog channel. So what do we do from here? We've just finished our seam. What I'm going to do is pull up that loop and I'm going to secure it again with a stitch marker just to keep it safe. Put my hook down for a minute and then I'm going to turn the whole tube. I wanna do it the other way so I don't get my end here in the middle. So we'll turn it right side out. 
Like I said, the fabric itself doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. We just want to make sure our seams on the inside then. So there we are. Now we have a right side out too. You could theoretically stop at this point, add an edging and have a cowl, but we're making a hat. So let's continue with that. Now, let me find that active loop again and remove the stitch marker. That's kept it safe. What we're going to do now, after I get my hook back in here, there we go. Remember, if you take your hook out of an active loop, you always want to reinsert it so that the part that moves when you pull the tail is in front of the hook. So with my, oops, and then grab the right tail to pull, of course. So with my loop back on the hook here, I'm ready to begin gathering the top of the hat. This is going to be the crown, the part that's closed at the top. So what I'm going to do is I am going to chain one, and this is just working around the long edge that we happen to end at at the end of the seam. Again, that's because without the right side, wrong side, it doesn't really matter where we end up, as long as we end up on a long side here. So after I've chained one, I'm going to single crochet in each block around. Now, if you're not used to reading your stitches, this can be kind of tricky, but let's take a closer look at this pattern right here. So if we look at this, uh, if you've watched the other tutorials or made this pattern before, this fabric before on my other fortunes patterns on Moogly, then you'll see this is one block right here. This is where we had a space and a double crochet and a chain three. And this right here, we've got our chain three, our double crochet, our space, and our next double crochet. This is a second block. So as you really start to read the fabric, it'll be a little bit more obvious um, where those blocks are. Uh, in the meantime, what you want to do is have 28 stitches worked evenly around. Now, when we were making this fabric, it's 28 rows long, so that's one single crochet per block. So um, it's okay if you get to the end and you find out you had one or two too many, you can go ahead and frog it and try it again, just remove some. Um, if you're having a really hard time reading where the blocks are, then just go ahead and try and work 28 single crochets evenly around this row. So uh, it doesn't really matter where in the block you work, you can just kind of pick a place and try and be, uh, just try and be consistent. So for the first one here, I'm going to work just the side of that stitch, and then I will go down to the next block. I know I've got the side of that stitch there, so I'll put that stitch there. Come down to the next one. Let's see here. Sometimes these do get tricky to read, don't they? There we go. And like I say, just pick a place. Try and work every so often if you're having a lot of trouble reading it. Just figure every inch or so, depending. Just make sure you're spreading them around and that you have 28 by the end of the round. So I will see you at the end of this round. Okay, so here I am at the end of round one of our gathering of the crown. You can see this is already pulling it together. Just one single crochet in each of those blocks really starts to pull it in overall. And like I said before, if, you, if you're if you worried about exactly making sure one lands in each block, don't worry about it too much. Just try and evenly space them around because we're really going to be gathering it quite a bit here anyway. So moving on to round two of the, uh, brown, the crown section, what we're going to do is slip stitch two together around. So I haven't joined it yet. Let me go ahead and finish this first round. That was our first single crochet we made there. So I'll go ahead and slip stitch there. That finishes round one. So to begin round two, I'm not going to chain because these are slip stitches. I'm going to slip stitch two together around, which will give us 14 stitches at the end of this row. So I'm just going to go into that first one there, pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up my loop, and pull that last loop through both. And that's just an easy way to do your slip stitches around. Now, at the end of this round, we're going to want to um, join, but finding that first one can be tricky. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker right in that first stitch we just made, like so. That way I know I'll be able to find it again at the end. And that'll make it easier to count too, to count those top Vs and make sure I just have 14 at the end. So I'm just going to slip stitch again right through two stitches at a time using my slip stitch two together decrease. Whoops, except for when I drop it all off the hook. Let's try that again. So one more time, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through both. And that finishes that one. So we're going to continue that on around and hopefully at the end of this round, we will have 14 stitches. Okay, so I've made my 14 decreases here. So now if you look and counted those top Vs right there, if we can see them right there, 
there would be 14 of those around. And because I've got my first stitch marked, it's gonna be super easy to go ahead and slip stitch to that first stitch. There we are. I just need to pull that stitch marker out of the way first. And then I will go right in there and slip stitch it closed like so. Now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go ahead and break the yarn or another, it's another way of saying to cut it. And I'm going to leave a pretty long tail here. Now I've talked before about, I really like leaving long tails for weaving in, but this is excessively long even for that. The reason I've done this is because I'm going to go ahead and just pull up that loop get it in my yarn needle, and then I'm going to use this yarn. Oops, that's a bit of a large needle. Let me try a different one. There we are. I'm going to use this yarn to finish the gathering of the crown. So I've put it on my yarn needle or tapestry needle. Uh, that's just a large blunt needle with a nice big eye you can get your yarn through. And then I'm gonna stick my hand inside the hat to make it a little easier here. So I can see my 14 stitches. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave them together and I've found I've tried this a variety of different ways and I like the look I get best if I actually come from the outside of the hat in on each of those stitches let's see if we can get that a little bit more in focus there we go so I'll just go around and each one of these gathered slip stitches I will send my yarn and needle through I'm not gonna pull too hard just yet I want to wait and do that when I get to the end otherwise it'll be getting really tight as I go here and that will make it a little bit more difficult. So I've gotta be most of the way around now, you'd think. I have a few more to go here, and it's okay actually if you lose count and go over a few bit. Um, it's just a matter of pulling this closed. I don't think you'd be able to tell if you did maybe one too many of these or maybe even two. I accidentally sort of pulled them together twice. So let's see, we're almost, I can feel my seam inside the hat right there, so I know I'm not there yet. That'll be another good clue. And one thing I meant to mention earlier too, if you're watching this before you've actually started making the hat, when you're doing that seam up the short sides, uh, if you're worried about getting them just so, you can use stitch markers to hold your sides together and keep them lined up. So you can see I'm almost out of yarn already, although there's plenty here still left to weave in. And I've come all the way around. I can feel my seam is right here. So maybe I'll go just through that one right there. Doesn't really matter. And then, I should be able to just pull on this really hard. Well, not too hard. Don't go so crazy, you break your yarn. So pull on it gently, we'll put it that way, until that just closes right up, like so. Let me put my hand back in there so you can see. We've got our gathered crown. It's a little bit of a hole there, but I can pull it even tighter. Helps a little bit to put your finger and thumb on top when you pull there to help stabilize it. And then because I'm on the outside of the hat, I wanna make sure this gets woven in on the inside. So I'll just send it right down through the center of the hole, like so. And we've got a nicely closed top of our hat. There's maybe a little bit of a hole left there, but this is a pretty lazy hat, so I'm not too worried about that. Then from there, I'd turn the hat back wrong side out and use my needle to continue and finish up and just weave in these ends. Now, I'm not going to demo fully how to weave in ends, oops, on this video, again, I have a separate tutorial for that if you're interested or need more help on weaving in ends, but odds are you've got a pretty good handle on that already. So I would just keep weaving that in until I've used most of these inches and then trim off the excess. But for now, for the sake of time in this video, I'm just gonna trim it off a little bit early so it doesn't hang out of the hat while we move on to the brim. You can see now we've got a pretty good hat shape going. We've got our crown here at the top nice and gathered but at the bottom, this is way too floppy to wear. So I've got my seam right here and we will get started on the brim. Okay, so it's time to add the brim. I've turned the hat upside down because of course I'm gonna be working along the bottom of the hat. I've got my yarn and I've got a smaller hook. I've moved to a J hook. So what I'm going to do is find that seam again. It's just a great starting place and one you can easily feel with your fingers. And to the side of that, I'm just gonna go ahead and slip stitch to join my yarn, like so. So now my yarn is attached again. So what I'm going to do is I like to pull that slip stitch down real tight. Some people use that as their turning chain. I like to make sure that mine are just attached that much tighter. So then I can chain one, and I'm gonna work two half double crochets in this first block, followed by three half double crochets in the next block, then two, then three, then two, then three. 
So again, this is just really a matter of spacing them evenly and having 70 stitches at the end of this round. So as you look at these spaces, you can kind of come up with your own system for that or wherever you think those stitches look best, but the end goal is to have in 70 stitches worked evenly around. So let me go ahead and show you how I did that. With my chain one, I'm gonna make a half double crochet right in that first section I joined to, like so. Then another half double crochet in this next section, right here in between stitches. I'm just going right on around those stitches all together. I'm not worried about trying to cut into them. With this stitch pattern and all the slip stitching we did as we decreased, trying to break into those stitches with our edging stitches essentially would be uh, very difficult and annoying, <laughs> frankly. So I've chosen not to do it. So we come to the next block. I can see this is my chain three at the end of that block. So I'm just gonna go right around that and work three half double crochets. So there's one and two and three, like so. Then moving on to the next block here. Remember, as we start to read our blocks, these are actually quite a bit easier to read right on this side of the fabric. We have these two uprights right here. So I'll go ahead and I know I need to have two half double crochets in this block, so I'll put one on each side. We'll go right in there for one and right in between for the next. Whoops, there we go. Then we're back to one where we've got the three chains on the end, so I'll work three there. One, two, and three. So you would just continue this all the way around until, like I say, you've got uh, 70 half double crochets at the end of this first round. So I will see you there. All right, here I am at the end of round one of the brim. I've made 70 single crochets, or excuse me, 70 half double crochets all the way around that second long side, the one that's not the brim, or not the crown rather. So to finish that off, I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch in the first half double crochet we made. So after that, it's time to begin rounds two and three, which are totally identical. So I'll just demo one of them. We're gonna start with a chain one, then we're gonna half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to put the rest of this hat so you can see it really clearly. So to half double crochet in the third loop, again, this is something I have a separate video tutorial for on mooglyblog.com and on the Moogly YouTube channel, but let me just demo it relatively quickly right here. What we're going to do is look at the back of our half double crochet stitch right here. And in the back of every half double crochet, there is, it's actually easier to see on this second one right here, there is a horizontal line. Let me flip it around so it's actually horizontal on camera here. This is the horizontal line in the back of a half double crochet, and that is the loop we're going to be going under when we half double crochet in the third loop. Again, for some better close-ups, you'll want to look at the separate video tutorial for half double crochet in the third loop. So let's go ahead and do that in each one of these stitches around. Finding it in the first one can be a little tricky, but if you just stick your hook behind those top two loops, the usual V that you work into, you'll see there's another loop waiting for you right there. So just put your hook, and sometimes it might help to use a pointier hook too, but put your hook under that loop, and then you can yarn over and pull up your loop, like so, and finish your half double crochet as usual. What this does, and it's harder to see again, we've only done it once, it pushes that front V to the front, which gives you a really neat look for the brim. And it's also just that little bit tighter and sort of stretchy. Now, one note about the previous round. If you came up with, say, 68 or 69 half double crochets and it looks good and you like it, you can probably stick with that. Um, this brim is pretty stretchy, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, the exact stitch count isn't as necessary in terms of fit. It isn't, there's a lot of ease, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you don't have to worry too much about that. But for rounds two and three now, do you just wanna make sure that you work into each one of these stitches now that you've got your stitch count established for the brim and make your half double crochets in the third loop. Now that I've made a few more, you can kinda of see the neat effect you get with this stitch. So I'll continue that all the way around for round two and then again for round three. So I'll see you at the end of that. Okay, so I have finished three rounds of the brim. You can see I've got my two rounds of half double crochet in the third loop, which have pushed the loops on the previous two rows forward. 
creating this great look. Now you can try your head on at this point before you finish up with round four and see if the brim is too big or too loose and you can adjust your hook size a little bit for that as necessary. I did switch to a smaller hook to make the brim, a J specifically, uh, but since heads come in different sizes and gauges of course are a little different, you may find that it's too stretchy and you need to go down a hook size or it's a little uh, too tight and you might wanna move back up a hook size. So after we have finished these rounds, it's time to begin the last round of the hat. Now round four of the brim here is very simple and very similar to what we've been doing. We're going to chain one and this time instead of working a half double crochet in the third loop, we're just gonna go ahead and work a single crochet in the third loop. And what this does is it pulls that last round of the brim a little bit closer as you'll see here in a minute. So I will go behind that stitch, find my third loop and just make a single crochet like so. Let's do that one more time. We go behind under that third loop, pull up our loop, and finish a single crochet just as normal. So I'll go ahead and make a few of these. Like I say, I'm not gonna finish the entire hat or the entire round here simply because you can take it from here. It's just a matter of single crochets all the way around in that third loop. And then of course, join and break at the end of this round because then you'll be done with your hat. Personally though, I really like to add some buttons or a little bit of bling to this one. It's great on its own, but even though the buttons aren't actually functional for this hat, I just think they add a really nice touch. So I've got a few stitches or so done here on round four, so I can pull my hook out and show you how that looks. You can see that last round there pushes that previous round forward and gives us a really nice finished edge to our brim. So we'll turn this back around so you can see a little bit more what the hat looks like when it's finished. You can see that brim really pulled in our sides, but the body of the, self, the hat itself is pretty loose, which is great because especially with a lace, lacy pattern like this, you don't want it too tight on the hair. It's also a little bit slouchy. If we take another look at the pictures of the finished hat, you can see a little bit better how it fits on my teenage daughter. Now, back to this hat. When I finish this one, like I said, I like to add a couple buttons. And the buttons aren't functional, but they're just a great way to add a little extra touch to the hat and a great way to personalize it too. And of course, if you've got a button for your favorite sports team or band or activity, whatever you like, then that's a great way to add a little extra to this hat too. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial for the Fortunes hat and that you check out the matching patterns on Moogly Blog as well. There's a triangle shawlette and a full-size wrap, and you can just do a lot of really fun things with this stitch pattern, so I hope you'll give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.